Hello. In our next uh, video lecture, we're going to be talking about how X3 can be utilized uh, for the purchase of uh, MRO or non-stock managed items. So the purpose of this uh, lesson is that uh, many organizations, they want to be able to control the purchase of their non-inventoriable goods in the same manner that they control the purchase of the inventoriable goods that are stock managed. Uh, some examples of these types of items can include shop supplies, office supplies, or IT equipment. Okay, and the purchase order fulfillment cycle in X3 can be applied in the same manner for stock managed goods as well as non-stock managed items. So first off, we're going to be taking a look at how to set up the product in X3, uh, talking about some different approaches to the establishment of the part ID number. Uh, we're going to talk about the stock management control setting and how that needs to be set up, as well as some special considerations on the product accounting code. Um, then we're going to switch gears over to the supplier accounting code and uh, take a look how that needs to be set up also. So from a order fulfillment flow, uh, these are going to be the steps that we go through in the system. We're going to be starting off by generating the purchase order for the MRO item. Secondly, we're going to generate the purchase order receipt to register the uh, receipt of service or the receipt of the item. Uh, then finally, we're going to generate and do a three-way match of the purchase invoice against the purchase receipt. And what we'll see here in the system from a financial impact perspective, this will go ahead and debit the applicable charge to account and credit our accounts payable. Then the final thing that we'll look at in this lesson is a look at a function, uh, the invoice receivables function. Now, this can be a useful tool in the system uh, to allow the accounting department to auto-generate the accruals for all purchase receipts of non-stock managed items during the period for which uh, we haven't got an invoice from the supplier during that period. Okay, so now let's go ahead and switch over to X3 and take a look at the setup and to walk through an example. So here we are within X3. So a couple special considerations that you're going to see for these um, types of items. Uh, number one, I set up a special product category for the MRO items. Then down here, I went ahead and established a part number, and I just titled that part number office supplies. Okay, so in terms of the product number specification, depending upon the amount and the degree uh, that you want to classify these types of purchases, uh, some organizations just go with a very broad approach. Maybe they'll just have one product that they call miscellaneous. And it'll be through that that they execute all these types of purchases. And when they're issuing the PO, they'll just update the, the description on a one-by-one -one basis. Um, other organizations might create a product for each department. So they'll have one for like office or admin supplies, um, another product for warehouse supplies, another one for maybe distribution supplies. Um, so they have, you know, a little bit more of a level of uh, classification. Then finally, other organizations will set up a part ID for each and every product um, that they would buy. Um, you know, uh, IT equipment, um, you know, paper, uh, pr you know, ink for the printers, um, you know, uh, in, you know, soap for the dispensers, and they kind of take it down to that level of detail. So whatever you feel is best for your organization, you can model it. Uh, next, over here on the management tab, uh, the important consideration here in the stock management section is that all of these products should be set up as being not managed. Okay, so we're not going to be carrying, um, you know, these goods in stock. 
Okay, so you're going to want that not manage setting checked. Then finally, uh, over here on the unit of measure, I'm going to set up my stocking unit as a per unit or a per each. Um, and on the financials tab, uh, there's the consideration relative to the accounting code. So in this case, I came in and I established a new accounting code for office. So if I went, I went ahead and I tunneled in through the action button, went to the accounting code, came under my, in my case, my American account transaction. Then in here, I went through, clicked on the new, gave it a code and a description. Then what's of interest here, it's going to be on what's defined on line one of this accounting code. So this 71,000 account is my office supplies expense account on my uh, chart of accounts. So that's going to be the line for which you want to define for all your ledgers that you have set up. Okay. So those are the primary considerations from a product perspective. Uh, next, let's go over and take a look at the supplier master setup. So now, over here on the supplier master record, I'm going to come in for this ABC industrial supplier, come to the financials tab. Then what I'm going to do is come over to the accounting code. And I'm going to tunnel down to that. Okay, choose my entry transaction. And in here on the supplier accounting code, it's going to be this line for the invoice to receive, which is going to be the, um, you know, the significant uh, line definition here uh, for this exercise. Now, on this line four, this is going to be where you want to or, um, define your kind of accrued expenses account um, that you'd wish to have charged when we run that month end process to generate the accruals for all receipts of these non-stock managed goods for which you haven't got uh, the invoice for. Okay, great. So next, uh, let's go over and enter in a purchase order in the system. Okay, so over here at my purchase order management function, uh, here's a PO for the ABC in Industrial uh, Supplier. Then over here on the lines uh, tab, I went ahead and entered in the product like I would, you know, any other inventoryable product. Came across, and this uh, case said I'm buying two units at uh, $20 per. Then what you'll see here, based upon my product accounting code setup, my general ledger account, that 71,000 account automatically popped in for me. Okay. So for, depending upon how closely you want to track here, here in the description field, um, you know, I could uh, put in something like, uh, you know, like printer paper. You know, to clarify, you know, what I'm buying here. Then these descriptions, these updated descriptions will show on your purchase order documentation. Okay. So we got our PO. Next, let's go over and book the purchase order receipt. So under our purchasing menu, we're going to come down to receipts, then receipts. Specify our receiving site. Specify our supplier. Then we can come over to our order selection tray. And there's our PO. Oh, got to fix the accounting period here. It's not open. Okay, we're back now. So now we got the PO loaded for the office supplies. In this case, it was a box of printer paper. Okay, all your quantity information defaults in from the PO as well as all your other financial information, as well as, you know, the cost and the general ledger accounts. So we'll go ahead and create this receipt. Okay. So one thing to note, again, being that this is a non-stock managed product, um, X3 is not going to automatically generate the accruals. Uh, so for this 
receipt, so no bookkeeping um, is going to take place at this point. Okay, so now let's go over and enter in the purchase invoice against this receipt. So under our purchasing menu, we're going to go to invoices, then invoices. and choose our invoice type. Specify the total amount of the invoice. Come over to our receipt selection tray, and there's our receiver. Go ahead and bring those details in. Go ahead and confirm our price here, then we'll go ahead and create. Okay, so now that the invoice is in, we can come down and click on the post button to update our AP subledger and our general ledger. We'll go ahead and say okay. That'll generate for us a little log, log file telling us the journal entry number that is generated. Then at this point, we can come down under our options menu, or excuse me, down under our zooms menu and go to accounting document. And this will tunnel us over to the respective journal entry. Then here on the lines tab, I can see here's my AP liability. Here's the offsetting charge to the 71,000 expense account for the respective monetary amount that I made the invoice out for. Okay, so in our next scenario here, what we're going to take a look at is in our month end process. So we're going to simulate through just those same steps that we did um, for uh, the PO, the receipt, but we're going to assume that month end has come and we haven't got this invoice yet, and it'll show you how you can auto generate the accrual for this activity. So, uh, back out here at our main menu, we're going to go to Financials, Closing Processes, then Invoice Receivables. Okay, I'm going to come in and run it for our company. I'm going to say All Sites for my full range of suppliers. I'm going to tell X3 that I want to take into account all receipt of goods through the end of the accounting period. My generation type I'm going to set to actual. The accrual entry is going to have a temporary status. In this case, for my products to be processed, I'm going to flag it only for products that are not managed because my stock managed goods have already had an accrual generated for them. Here's the date of my accounting entry. And this accounting entry is going to be set up to reverse the first day of the following accounting period. Okay, so now we can come over here and click on our open. And that goes ahead and generates a little log file for us. Uh, then it indicates in here the respective uh, journal entries that were generated. Okay, uh, journal entry three here, then there's the respective reversing entry. Okay, then it gives us details here regarding the receipts for which um, are going to be included in the journal. Okay, so if I want to go and take a quick look at that, I can close out of here. Let's go under my financials menu, then to journals and journal entry. And in here on the journal entries, here's my first entry that was generated, dated the last day of the month. A credit going to my accrued uh, expenses account and an offsetting debit to that office supplies account. Then, in addition, I can see my reversing journal entry here, generated on the first day of the subsequent month. Again, $40 charges 
just reversing the activity. Okay, so that is kind of the complete flow um, of the MRO uh, purchase order fulfillment cycle. Um, if this video is of help to you, please remember to like and subscribe. And as, as always, um, if you have any questions, feel free to inbox me. Thanks a lot, and we'll talk to you soon.